Hi guys, thank you all for tuning in um, to this CPR class. I know this is probably not your favorite thing uh, to, to be watching. Maybe it's getting you out of a little bit of class time, so you might enjoy that a little bit more than I think. Um, but I'm gonna spend just a little bit of time with you guys today just going over, over CPR, um, also known as cardiopulmonary resuscitation. Um, and this is something that I hope that you guys never have to do or never have to participate in, but it is something that we want to talk about. We want to look at it and, and go over the basics of it so that if you ever do have to participate in it or you ever do have to um, help someone or be involved in, a, in an event that, um, that you're able to help them. Um, we're going to look at a couple of different things. We're going to look at um, CPR on an adult. We're going to look at CPR on an infant. Um, and we're also going to look at um, choking. And um, we're going to talk about each one of those things and how that we um, can help a victim in the event of those, those things. So first of all, I'm going to introduce myself. Uh, my name's Ibby Hopper. Um, I am from Russell Springs, so you guys can't hold that against me. Um, I am the Director of School-Based Services for Cumberland Family Medical. So I um, work with each one of your all school nurses and, um, and I help them. And um, I work with the nurse practitioners in your all schools. So um, I'm familiar with all of your schools and, um, and kind of how that they work. Um, and I know that this has been a tough year for you guys. Um, COVID has been something that's been very hard on, um, on everyone in our society. And I think it's been um, also um, not only extremely hard on adults, but even more hard on you guys as students. And so um, I appreciate you all hanging in there. You guys, I know are working so hard at school. You've made it almost to the end and uh, the, the end is near and, um, and you guys are doing such a great job. Um, I get to interact with students some, I don't get to interact with them as much as I would like to. But um, I learn a lot from students and um, it's amazing how smart you guys are. Um, I have four kids myself, uh, three of them um, are teenagers. And so I learn a lot uh, from teenagers. And so it amazes me how smart that you guys truly are and what we as adults can learn from teenagers. Um, so I could probably learn this from you all. You all probably know more than I do when it really comes down to it. So I'm not going to talk anymore. Uh, we're going to spend some time learning this. Um, if you guys have any questions in the future, you're welcome to reach out to me. You're welcome to reach out to one of your school nurses. Um, we want you guys to just learn these basic, basic concepts. That way, if there is ever um, an event and you have to be there to help someone, you know what to do. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to talk about um, in CPR is why do we do CPR? Okay, so the reason that we do CPR or the reason that we would help someone is if they were in a cardiac emergency. Okay, so um, we have to make sure that we are performing correct compressions. And I'm going to show you guys correct compressions here in just a few minutes. Um, the basis of a CPR or um, cardiac pulmonary resuscitation is to perform correct compressions, our rescue breaths, and to do that in a timely manner. Um, timing is key in everything that we do in CPR. We have to make sure that we are uh, responding to that person in a very timely manner. If they are in a true cardiac emergency, um, timing is, is the key in that. Um, we have to uh, make sure that we um, are doing those correct compressions. We're performing correct breaths. We want to make sure that we get EMS on the way as quickly as possible. Um, we want to make sure that if we have an AED around that we know how to use that AED and we're going to go over that in a little bit as well. Um, we also want to make sure that we're keeping ourselves safe and so we're going to go through that as well. 
So, so the main key concepts in uh, CPR for a lay person, so you guys would be considered lay people. So lay people are people who are not in the medical profession. So if you all are going into the medical profession, that is wonderful and that's amazing. And I hope that I can see you guys here in a few years working in the medical profession and we may even be working together. And I think that that would be wonderful uh, for us to be able to work together. But if you're not ever going to work in the medical profession, that's fine. Um, it's not for everybody. Believe me, um, I would have never thought um, that I would be doing what I'm doing now. Um, and, and that's OK. Um, it's hard to know what you're going to be doing. Um, so this is what I'm going to be going over today is just for um, lay people, which is you guys now. You're not in the medical profession. You're just a, a bystander that's going to be able to help someone. Okay, um, so again, our key concepts are correct compressions, our breaths, and helping someone in a correct amount of time or in a quick amount of time, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and, and dive into the adult um, CPR version. Now, normally I like to do this in person um, because I like to be able to see you all. I like for you all to be able to practice on, um, on the mannequins and, and I like to be able to interact that way. Unfortunately, because of COVID this year, we can't do that. And I hate that and, um, and I wish I could be there in person um, interacting with you guys and letting you all practice on the mannequins and all those things that we always get to do. So you're just gonna have to bear with me um, as, as we're doing this over Zoom and I'm videoing myself doing this. So you're just gonna have to bear with me today, okay? So let me move my computer back here. So this is my adult mannequin, okay? And this is what we're gonna be using to go over our adult CPR. All right, now there are a couple of ways that you can hold your hands when you're performing compressions. The way that I like to do it is to take one hand and interlace my fingers like this, okay? So that way, when you're performing your compressions, you can use your arms and push down like that, okay? You can also just hold your hand and make a fist and you can push like this, okay? But most people are gonna use the finger, the interlace and down like this, okay? Now, how do we know if someone is in cardiac arrest? or in a cardiac emergency, okay? We wanna check to see if they're unresponsive. Now, as a lay person, um, you're probably not going to be comfortable checking a pulse. So the way that you're gonna be able to, to check, obviously if someone is on the ground, um, you're gonna know that they could be unresponsive. There's a lot of reasons that someone could be unresponsive. Um, they could be experiencing some sort of psychosis. Um, they could be, it could be a respiratory issue um, or it could be a true cardiac issue. So the best way to check to see if someone is breathing is to look. So what you're gonna do, if someone is, is down, you are going to get down and you're gonna look. If you can't see their chest rise and fall, rise and fall, then you're gonna know that they are in a cardiac emergency and that's when you need to begin CPR, okay? Now, if you are the only person around the victim, then you're gonna to wanna to call 911 immediately before you begin um, working on the patient, okay? So you're gonna to wanna to call 911. Hey, this is Ibby Hopper. I'm here um, at the mall. Um, this, this victim is down. I believe they're in a cardiac emergency. Someone needs to get here to help me. Okay, if there are multiple people there, then um, you can have someone else to call 911 and you can start trying to help the patient. All right. Another thing that you want to make sure to keep in mind is that you wanna make sure that the scene is safe. Now, what does that mean? If there has been, let's say that there has been a fire, okay? And you want to help someone 
that could be in a cardiac emergency and there's been a fire. We'll say you run into that building and you end up hurting yourself as well. Well, if you end up hurting yourself, then you are of no help to that patient. And that means that someone's gonna have to help you and help that patient as well, okay? So it, it does no good for you to help some, try to help someone if the scene is not safe, okay? Now, we also, another key component like we talked about of CPR is giving breaths. On a patient um, who is an adult, the way to give correct breaths is to open up the airway. So to open the airway, we're gonna tilt the head back, okay? So with normally, if a patient's laying down, your chin's gonna be down. So we're gonna open the airway, we're gonna pinch the nose, and we're gonna put our mouth on their mouth, and we're gonna give them two blows of air, okay? So it's gonna be. And you're gonna see the chest rise and fall, rise and fall. And it's not big, um, big blows of air like you're trying to blow the house down. It's just a normal blow of air, rise and fall, rise and fall, okay? And then their head is gonna go back into position you're gonna continue your compressions. When you're doing compressions, you're gonna do 30 compressions, then you're gonna give two breaths. Go back to 30 compressions, two breaths, okay? And you're gonna continue that pattern, 30, two, 30 and two, 30 and two, okay? And you're gonna continue doing that. Um, you will continue doing that until someone brings an AED or until you just can't do it anymore, or until EMS gets there. So until uh, the ambulance service gets there and they take over, okay? So that is gonna be our basic components of CPR. It's gonna be our compressions, our breaths, and how fast we can get to the patient, okay? So we're gonna go through a whole scene of taking care of this patient. And we are going to um, pretend like that we are um, at the mall and um, I, we have a friend with us. So that friend is going to call 911 for us. They haven't watched this video yet. So they haven't um, been trained or seen anything about CPR. So they don't know anything about CPR and we don't have an AED available, okay? So our friend is gonna call 911 for us and um, we're gonna go through this entire scene, okay? So we just are walking through the mall one day, we're shopping, we're having a good time, everything's going great, um, we're getting ready to go watch a movie with our friend, all is good, we don't think anything bad's gonna happen and all of a sudden, we see this guy laying on the ground and there's a lot of commotion going on around this guy, okay? Another thing to remember is that you always wanna count your compressions out loud. And the reason that you wanna do that is because if there's a lot of commotion going on, um, you're gonna lose count on your compressions, okay? Now, another thing that we need to point out is where in the world do you place your hands for your compressions? Now I'm gonna turn my mannequin over here so you guys can see. Let me back my computer up just a little bit. Okay, so you see the nipple line here, right here. So on an adult, you're gonna find the nipple line and you're gonna go down about two inches right here. So right in the sternum, okay? So here's the nipple line. You're gonna go down about two inches. Okay, so right in the sternum. That's where your hands are gonna go for, for compressions. On an adult, you're going to go down about two inches on your compressions. So you're gonna see me when I'm pushing, it's gonna be pretty hard and I'm gonna go down pretty far. So you're gonna go down about two inches on your compressions. Um, and it, it's gonna take quite a bit of strength, not on the mannequin so much, but on a real person, it's gonna take quite a bit of strength to go down that far, okay? So we're gonna go through a scene here and you're gonna see me um, check on the patient, see that they're really not breathing. Then I'm gonna tell my friend to call EMS, okay? So it, the crowd is, is 
uh, there's a lot of commotion going on and I, we're going to get in the middle of that commotion. There's no one there that knows anything about CPR, but I'm going to be brave and I'm going to say that I know how I've been trained. I've watched a video. I know how to do CPR. Okay, so I see this patient laying there and I'm going to say, you okay? You okay? Nothing there. All right, I'm going to look for any breathing. Oh man, there is no breathing here. All right, so I'm gonna tell my friend, call 911. All right, so I'm gonna get in position here. And I'm gonna put my hand down, interlace my fingers, and we're gonna do 30 compressions. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. Okay, we're gonna open the airway. Back to compressions. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. Open the airway. Okay, so we would continue doing that until there were signs of loss, okay? Or until the AED arrived, if there was an AED, or until EMS arrived. Now, there was something I did wrong in this scenario. And what I did wrong is I didn't tell my friend to call EMS. I got too caught up in what I was doing and I left that step off, okay? So that's a very, very important step that you have to remember. You have to remember to make sure that you have emergency services um, on the way, okay? So that's our adult. Now, we're gonna talk about infant CPR. Um, I hope you never have to do CPR on anyone, um, but I especially hope you don't have to do CPR on an infant. Um, infant CPR is very similar to adult CPR um, in the fact that it is 30 compressions to two breaths. You're still gonna assess the, the infant to see if they're, if they're breathing. Um, you're going to check for signs of life um, by looking for breaths. Instead of tapping their shoulders to see if they're okay, on an infant, we typically would tickle their feet to see if they're okay. Um, one of the differences on an infant that we are going to do um, is when we're doing compressions, our compressions are a little different in the way that we do them. So I'm going to show you how that you're going to hold your hands on an infant. We also wanna hold their head when we're doing compressions, okay? Um, another thing on an infant is that if you're able to get them up onto a hard surface, that's gonna be um, much to your benefit. It's very difficult to do infant CPR on the ground um, because it, it's so, it's hard to get down on the ground. Uh, probably much more easier for you all because you're young and I'm old and it's, it's hard for me to get onto the ground to do infant CPR. Um, but it's, you know, it's, it's easier if you can get them up onto a hard surface. Um, same thing with the adult. They need to be on a hard surface. You don't want to move the patient if, um, if it could put them in more danger or if you think they could have a head or a neck injury. Um, but they need to be on a hard surface. It's gonna be difficult to do correct compressions if they are on a, a soft surface, okay? Um, so we're gonna go through infant CPR. Again, it's very similar to adult CPR. Just a few different things that we're gonna look at. Um, the way that we give breaths on an infant is a little different, um, but the main thing to keep in mind, again, our, our main concepts are gonna be compressions, breaths, and then making sure that we get to them in a timely manner. Okay, so I'm going to get my infant out here. This is my infant. I know he's a little scary. I don't like the way he looks. Okay. All right, so here's my infant. 
So like I said on an infant, when we're checking for signs of life, we're gonna tickle their feet, okay, to check for signs of life. If we don't see anything, we're gonna look for breaths on them, okay? When we're doing compressions on an infant, again, we're gonna find the nipple line. You're gonna go down about an inch on the infant to do your compressions. Now, on an infant, there are two different ways you can do compressions. You can take two fingers to do your compressions, okay? And then you push like this, okay? Which is the way I typically do compressions on an infant. Or you can encircle their body with your thumbs. Now, you typically do this um, technique if you have two people to help. That way one person can hold their head and one person can do the compressions. Because if you're doing your compressions this way, then you don't have anybody to hold the head, okay? So you always wanna make sure you hold the head. If you don't hold the head and you start doing compressions, then their head's gonna hit and you're gonna have a traumatic brain injury, okay? Um, the other difference in infant CPR is when we're giving breaths. We wanna open up the airway, which is tilting the head back, on an infant, we don't pinch their nose. On an infant, we're going to encircle their nose and their mouth with our mouth. We're going to give them two breaths and watch the chest rise and fall, rise and fall, okay? All right, so on our infant, we are going to pretend like that we are at a birthday party, okay? We're at our friend's birthday party. And this is our friend's uh, baby sister. And this baby sister um, becomes unresponsive. Now, we have no AED available, but there is someone there to call 911. Um, there is um, no one else there that knows anything about CPR. And we are gonna be brave and help because this is our friend's baby sister and we want to help them, okay? So there's lots of commotion going on, of course, because there's an infant that's unresponsive. We don't know why they're unresponsive, but we really want to help them um, and we want to help them as quickly as possible. So we're gonna go up to, to our friend's mom, let them know that we have watched this video. We know a little bit about CPR and we're gonna help. So our friend is calling 911 right now we're gonna tickle their feet. There's nothing there. We look, we don't see their chest rising or falling. So we know that they're not breathing. So we're gonna hold their head. We're gonna find their nipple line and we're going down about one inch. So we're using two fingers and our compressions, we're gonna go down about one inch on the compressions. So we're gonna count out loud. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. Open up the airway. One, two, three, four, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. Okay, and we're gonna continue that until there's signs of life, um, until EMS arrives or until we just can't do it any longer, okay? All right, so that is infant CPR. Um, and again, we hope that, that no one ever has to do either one of these, but we wanna be prepared in the event that you do, okay? Next thing we're gonna talk about quickly is gonna be choking. Um, choking is not something that we um, think about a whole lot, but it is something that happens a lot more in society than we realize. Um, and it's something that can be easily um, taken care of and easily prevented. Um, but we do see a lot of adverse events from choking um, that if we had someone there that was trained to help this victim or help this patient, then we could easily take care of it. So I'm gonna start with infant choking. 
Okay, here's my little scary looking infant again. And one of the things that um, happens in infant choking that we should not do, but makes infant choking worse. Um, if an infant is choking, one of the main things that we do is um, we stick our finger in there and we try to swap it out, okay? That's the worst thing that we can possibly do. Now, if you've got an infant that's choking and you can see that object in there, by all means, stick your finger in there and get it out. If you can't see the object in there, do not stick your finger in there. That makes it 10 times worse and can actually lodge that object deeper down into the infant's throat. So keep your fingers out of there unless you can see that object, okay? So on an infant, if they're choking, what you're gonna do, now choking actually means that they are um, not able to cough it out. Um, they are gasping for breath, um, things like that. If they're able to cough, they're still getting good respirations, they're not truly choking. It's a little bit scarier on an infant just because we, we're not able to talk to them, we're not able to get a full sense on where it's at. So on an infant, we would put the choking protocol into place a little bit quicker. So on an infant, what we're gonna do is we would stand up and we would support the infant's head in one of our hands, okay? And we would turn them upside down. We would find their shoulder blades and it would be five back blows. So it'd be one, two, three, four, five. We would then turn the infant over. So supporting their head, we would turn them over, still supporting their head, and it would be five chest thrusts, just like what we were doing before. So one, two, three, four, five. If it still didn't come out, it would be back over to the back blows, five of those, and then back over to chest thrust. And so what we're hoping in that is that with the force of gravity, that we can push that object out um, easily, okay? Now, if the infant were to become unresponsive, we would need to lower them um, to a table or any type of hard surface, begin CPR on them immediately, okay? Now, with an adult, what we would do, my adult back over here. With an adult, what we would do, we would want to turn, have them turn to one, one side. Um, same thing with the adult. Uh, my kids say to me all the time, I'm choking, mom, I'm choking. Are you not gonna do anything to help me? No, I'm not. Because if you're talking, you're not truly choking. You're fine, okay? So we would wanna put one foot beside of them, one foot behind them, okay? So that way, if they were to become unresponsive forward, we could catch them, unresponsive back, we could catch them, okay? So what you're gonna do on an adult is you're gonna make a fist and your thumb is gonna go into their stomach right above their belly button. And this hand is gonna go on top of it. So you're gonna do five upper thrusts. It's gonna be one, two, three, four, five. If it still doesn't come out, you're gonna do five more. One, two, three, four, five, okay? And you're gonna continue that um, until that object comes out. If, again, if that patient becomes unresponsive, um, you would begin uh, CPR immediately, lower them to the ground, begin CPR immediately on them, okay? Um, I, I appreciate you all listening into this video. I think I'm running out of time here, um, but you guys have been, um, it's been a great year with you all. I've got to work with several of you guys as I've been in and out of the schools. I hope that you've learned just a little bit of something um, in this video, whether it's been about choking or adult CPR or infant CPR. And hopefully this is something that you can take with you as you continue on your journey, um, whether it is on to college or onto a technical school, or it is um, into the workforce. Um, I hope that this is, is something that you've picked up that you can take a skill with you and, and learn from. Um, these are just some life skills that again, we hope we never have to use, but um, sometimes unfortunately we are put in situations where we do have to use these skills. So again, thank you all so much for, for listening in. Um, I appreciate you guys. I hope you all have a wonderful um, rest of the school year and good luck to you guys, class of 2021. Thank you so much.